Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's February 22nd, 2023. There's just moments left inside of this trading session here on a Wednesday afternoon. S&Ps are off just about, uh, well, 12 handles. And look, we got through the FOMC minutes. Markets did not necessarily tank. Nevertheless, there's some good, there's some bad in the uh, marketplace. Well, it might be getting ugly here. Let me explain exactly what I see inside of the tape at present time. As I was saying moments ago, all right, nothing to really worry about today. Effectively, looking at an intraday take on this marketplace. So uh, throughout the course of the day, we were just grinding listlessly higher. And I'm going to bring you into why we were just grinding a little bit higher. The FOMC minutes came out right here, some sell side activity. But again, markets are kind of rebounding a little bit. You know, the FOMC, all it really sparked was a, a whole lot of volume. The other, and probably on a positive note that, uh, that I'll bring up, volatility has actually dropped. And one of the things that I think is fairly critical, the marketplace was actually selling off a little bit while volatility had actually subsided. Now, a lot of people look at VIX. Yeah, I'm just not a, uh, I'm not a VIX kind of a trader, right? I look at a lot of the volatility futures. And I'm going to tell you exactly why I look at the volatility futures and exactly why you should, for the next couple of days, look at the volatility futures. All right, let's get down to it. Push aside for a second what you think about the marketplace. Push aside the fact that the S&P sold off by 80 handles yesterday. One of the things that really kind of caught my attention is what we often term contango and backwardation in the volatility futures. Now, for those of you that have been around for a while here at Theotrade, you know, it's it's been some time since we've actually talked about vol futures and, and contango and backwardation. So I'm going to kind of refresh everybody's memory, and I don't want to eat a huge amount of time on this. But uh, lo and behold, as we come into the cash close, it is a bit of a surprise. And here is the closing bell. It's over with the S&Ps ending the day massively unchanged. Anyway, if you take a look okay, at the volatility futures, they tell a very different story than what you see inside of the tape. Okay, what do I see in the vol futures? You know, earlier today, these 28 day volatility futures were coming very, very close to the 56 day vol futures. What you normally see in volatility futures, okay, these are like the March vol futures. They'd be trading, for instance, at 22, okay, 20. Normally, you'd go out to the April volatility futures, those are the apes, and they would jump to like 23.20. There'd be, you know, a point, point and a half in between them. Do you see a point and a half in between these? Okay, because I surely do not. What I see is 22.20, right? <clears throat> the next, uh, the next series out. And again, the next series that counts, right? It's not these March weeklies. Next series that counts are the 22.70. Right now, there's only 50 cents between front and back month vol futures. And that's a little worrisome. So we had one sell-off yesterday. All of a sudden, the volatility futures, they got themselves into an extraordinarily defensive posture. And earlier today, we even had okay, a glimpse of even backwardation showing up uh, back here from like, you know, the 84-day and 119-day. Look at this. They're on top of one another. So what I'm actually saying, and, you know, go, so why is this even important? <clears throat> when short duration, like this is 28-day okay, vol futures, if those eclipse, for instance, 56-day vol futures, it basically means there's more risk in the right here, right now, more risk in the present than there is in the back month, which is an, in, you know, it's an indication of like you're in the middle of the extreme. And what actually kind of I think shocks me about it is, wait a second, when we had one day of sell side activity, let me, let me go back to the S&Ps for just a second here, because this is this is the double take that I did this morning. Wait, 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 just, hold on a second. So throughout the course of this year, we rally, we rally, we rally, we rally, okay? Ah, we're coming off a little bit. Yesterday, we accelerate to the downside, and all of a sudden, you're telling me that, uh, hey, Lo and behold, we're, we're looking at the idea of possibly uh, vol futures inverting. And that's why I actually entitled tonight's video, you know, the good, bad, and the marketplace possibly getting really ugly on us because something's not right in volatility land. And it, again, you know, the VIX, 
as I said, I'm just not a VIX kind of trader. Yeah, the VIX spiked over here. Okay, the vol futures, even though they backed off today, they're still in a very, very garden stance. I'm just going to tell you, I never look at anything with autonomy. I don't look at just the vol futures. I'll cruise from the vol futures. I'll look at the VIX. The VIX was all kinds of heated up earlier today as well. It came off a little bit. That's actually a positive sign. But there was actually another negative sign on here. There's actually skew. <clears throat> skew has jumped to 124. Now, I don't know what the skew is. Okay. You know, later today, maybe it prints like 123, but skew is definitely elevated. It all coupled together, they're hedging. Who's they? Okay. Institutionals. Uh, there's hedging activity going on right now. That's the only way to really kind of, you know, paint the picture over here. Now, just because the institutional side is hedging, that does not mean get under your desk and start rocking back and forth. Where you do want to start to worry is when they're hedging and they see something obviously here in the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar, it is scary. Okay, there's no question right now, we are seeing a little bit of duck in cover. Okay, so we're seeing skew elevated. We've got the volatility futures that are definitely firing a couple of warning shots. The dollar is firing a couple of warning shots. You know, the bonds, the bonds saw some pretty heavy sell side activity bounced a little bit today, but neither here nor there. Like these bonds, they, listen, okay, they've had a lot of selling lately. They just sold off from the 133 handle to, you know, 124 uh, even. So uh, what, what else do you possibly need? Look, there's a lot of warning shots being fired. And that's why I'm saying, okay, this could be the beginning of the marketplace getting ugly, but we're just, we're not there yet. And I want to show you exactly what is so critical in the days to come. Obviously, many of you are going to think about, all right, let's look, let's look forward now to the, the PCE report that's coming out. The PCE is coming out on Friday morning. Ah, neither here nor there. Look, it's another catalyst. It's another match into a pool of gasoline. In the near term, though, forget about Friday morning. You still got to pass through Thursday. In the near term, what do you look for? I want to tell you exactly what I look at, okay, and what sectors you should look at. First of all, the SPX, the mother of all products. Okay, see this right here? That line, that's the lower edge of the expected move. We are trying to hold on to that like it were grim death throughout the course of this entire trading session. If you really want to know, what today's trading session is about. <clears throat> it's about the lower edge of the expected move. So as I was just denoting a second ago, the entire trading day, okay, today specifically came down to, can we hold the edge of the expected move? The edge of the expected move in the SPX, okay, is 40.06. Okay, it's 40.06 is the lower edge of the expected move. When I say, can we hold it? I mean, look what happened. Look what transpired the entire trading day. All we did on the trading day is just, edge along it. We've seen this time and time again. Came above it, came below it. You know, there's about 12 degrees of freedom off this level. Again, that level being 4006. When I say 12 degrees of freedom, you know, 12 points higher, 12 points lower, you're going to laugh, you're going to cry. Look where we ended up over here. Okay, we're just a hair outside of the edge of this expected move. Your entire trading week, okay, unequivocally is going to come down to that 4006 level. We're going to make a break off of it, okay? And I'm going to tell you right now, we continue lower from here. That's why I say it's the good, the bad, and the possibly getting really ugly. If you come off the lower edge of this expected move, that's where I got to kind of zoom out for a second. You can immediately snap a market into two sigma type territory. And that means, <clears throat> all right, so, you know, you're expecting about a $73 move this week. All of a sudden you can get like a $150 move. Okay. And we snap. And you know what the interesting irony of the snap would be? Okay. And there is, it, it is quite ironic to me. The interesting irony of a snap would be what level would we go to? Oh yeah, we have an answer for that. The level is actually 39.31 inside of the uh, S&Ps. If the market's going to break and really break lower, okay, that's your target, people, 39.31. So I nibbled. I definitely sold some premium today, but just nibbling because in the back of my mind, as I say, the good, the bad, and the possibly getting ugly over here, getting ugly to me is coming back down to 39.31. Now that's 39.31 inside of the S&Ps. And again, it's an interesting and ironic number that it just so happens that 39.31 is, you know, two deviations, two sigmas according to the none other than the SPX. So keep it in mind, right? So are we going to break off the 4006 inside of the SPX? The other really critical aspect, okay, of this marketplace, it's not so much the S&Ps, the zero-day expiration. Keep eyes on the financials. Why? Briefly, 
Okay, if you go into the financials and you bring up auto expected moves, they are already outside their expected move, right? They broke outside the expected move yesterday. They're outside of it today. I have been saying this literally since the beginning of the year. If you understand anything about capital rotations, capital rotations, very simple idea. But if you understand anything about it, okay, the bottom line is this. Last year, a lot of the rotations out of the marketplace were led by growth stocks, right? Your big tech stocks got absolutely hammered. This year, I believe it's going to be all about financials. Look, if markets are going to go lower, I know that many of the growth stocks and your Microsofts and your Apples have had huge rallies. Okay, but if you want to know if the S&Ps are going to break lower, watch the XLF. XLF has, in fact, started to break lower. Does that necessarily signify that it's over, baby? No. Okay, I mean, come on. Look, you, you broke lower here and you bounced right back up. There's no telling. Like, look, and I want to be very clear about this. Just because we broke lower earlier in the year, look, we ripped back to the upside. Here we're breaking lower. What you want to look for, though, on an intraday basis, literally on an intraday basis, if you see the percentage change on the financials leading us to the downside, you're in trouble. That's that's going to be the uh, you know kind of the nail in the coffin, if you will, for the uh, for the S and P's. Look at stocks also like Boeing. Look at this. You got a major stock, major constituent of the Dow, unscathed, but coming up like to this 205 level, it starts to break through like 200. It is on people. Okay. There's some signs right now of markets breaking down, but we're just not home yet. Look, we, we closed right at 4,000 on the button. And that's why, again, there is some good. I mean, volatility subsided to some degree today. Okay. That's actually good. <clears throat> the bad portion of that. Yeah. We're sitting on the lower edge of the expected move. Right. And the really ugly portion of it is exactly two times the expected move happens to equal an absolutely key level inside of the S and P's, which is none other than 3931. A lot to think about coming into uh, you know the latter portion of the week, but at the exact same time, when it comes to direction of the marketplace, who cares? <laughs> I've sold some premium today. Okay, that's going to come in very very nicely uh, down the road. So, you know, we break down even lower. It's going to be more premium to sell. We rally back up. Spectacular volatility will collapse, and uh, we'll cover some of that premium profitably. Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye bye.